Hello. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. So before we start, I should give a, a very short introduction about the guest today. So in the middle, our um, artist, Song Kun, she is a famous painter and also a well-known musician, a vocalist at the moment, because she do turn herself into this kind of so-called um, inter kind of contextualized way of working with her painting, video, and performance. So let's welcome Sung Kun. Yeah. And then the person on her left is one of the major uh, artists working in this so-called uh, biological and body changing situation of media art and which is like this afternoon we also have her work showing in the film sector. I mean, both of them, of course. Um, and this is Lu Yang. And then on the far right, <laughs> Mr. Johannes. <laughs> and he's uh, a very interesting artist from this artist duo, Come and Come. But he himself is an educator and a professor, should I say. Yeah. Yeah, a lecturer, um, and I think his work is kind of crossing uh, artistic practice and theoretical practice and many others. And I do thank to him that we borrowed actually the topic, what's the next, but without a question mark. So thanks to Johannes. Okay, so then um, let's begin maybe um, by playing the PowerPoint at the behind. Yeah, so please start. Yeah. So we have a little look, um, a little insight of what Song Kun does. So, and she would like to show something before, then I will start follow with a, a little conversation after. That's how she works, that's also from her video work, and we're also going to show a little clip, a video clip um, of her work. Okay, 
it stop? Yeah. Um, now I have to change it into Chinese. I think it's then more comfortable for Sun Quan to respond to the questions. Uh, Sun Quan. Uh, uh, Sun Quan, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you. Um, your works, we've seen, uh, in, we've, I've seen you, them exhibited in Minsheng uh, Museum. And you can actually take off your uh, headpiece. I just want to ask you, because um, our theme is what's next. It's kind of a very affirmative concept. And I would like to ask you, uh, what is your next step? Because you, um, the transformation of your worlds from painting to um, um, music video, and what else do you want to accomplish? I've never really thought given it too much thought, um, just my everyday like surviving, existing in this country, in China, um, I, I know what I want to do right now, present, and how to express um, like my strongest sentiments towards my own era, but it's not that uh, simplistic. So China is undergoing very uh, rapid transformation. I was born in the 1970s and and the opening up and reforms in the 1980s. Since 1980s um, up and up and up to now, China has undergone tremendous changes. And I have uh, experienced this particular era. Uh, lots of changes you really cannot grasp. And uh, within such experience, I can observe a lot of um, a lot of my own um, things that happened to me, happened to my relatives, uh, disintegration, reconfiguration, etc., etc. I think for me, the most um, I would try to work around um, all this with my most familiar method, like painting, for example, as medium. For me, it is a very simple and pure form. You can observe in the outside world and you come back into your own room and it's you can just think and reflect in an independent and quiet way and you see these things and what it means to you and um, whether you're an artist or not you can always draw and to to witness this entire process with even tiny things so I I resort to uh, the approach of, of painting uh, as to music um, I was going through under adolescence when uh, rock music was introduced into China so rock and roll was my uh, childhood uh, adolescence so back in the old days China was still quite authoritarian um, it's not a judgmental thing it's not a value judgment I don't say it's good or bad and just for example there's a lot of conformism a lot of collectivism there's one party rule I'm not given political judgments because I'm not particularly interested in politics as such but as a young person you are very um, you, you, you tend to question this order and rock and roll gave me uh, and people of my generation a particular outlet and um, so what is the what is the most essential part of human nature this is destiny, nation, state, whatever. So the spirit of rock and roll, I mean, although it comes from the West, I could see that it has independent judgment. Um, it contains, it, it has gone beyond uh, class politics and it has actually returned to some um, human emancipation of human spirit, freedom, uh, what you feel to be real. So all this, well, I've listened to uh, rock and roll all the time and I've started to play music and um, become, start a band, etc., etc. So as I grew up, uh, of course, you face a lot of obstacles it's not like in the West that if you start a band, you, it's a very everyday, commonplace thing. Um, for me, it is, it's always an uphill struggle. 
start questioning what you're up to. Um, so that's how it is. But I still find it quite interesting. Um, people think it's a very materialistic world, and under such a circumstance, under such circumstances, rock and roll actually offers you an alternative value uh, perspective on. So this is um, my experience. Um, making videos, I never actually thought I would uh, go about doing it because I love music. I love playing band. I love live music. So I always want to do a, a VJ or a VH2 live music scene and stuff. So I make videos mainly for music video purposes. I, so a lot of the clips you've seen here were probably just made for a particular song that I wrote uh, way back and I played guitar and the lyrics I wrote myself as well. So so kind of naturally uh, came to the, con the current form you see. It was not that I was doing it on purpose or was working on a particular piece of work on purpose um, to present, you know, to like Beijing as an industry city, forget oblivion, China is the biggest um, third world manufacturer very, very dirty, very polluted, um, hormones all come into play. So all these things, I, I feel strongly about them, and I want to make into make a work about it. I didn't think it was as a piece of work of art. It was just like some friends playing together. So I'm kind of a bit um, unnerved because I'm not really a multimedia artist in the true sense of that phrase. So I'm just play along and, you know, make things that I want to. To make. So you just mentioned that um, as a as someone who was born in the 70s and as an artist born in the 70s, as an urban resident, and you were having strong feelings about the historical time, temporality of China, and you didn't mention something that I was very interested in, and one of the reasons why you two were invited, like your identity, the gender identity as a woman, um, does it figure prominently in your own work? I don't really have any rationalization about it. Uh, if uh, Li Zhenghua asks me, as I mean, I, I don't know if it's really important being a woman, but of course it gives you a different perspective. For example, for example, the most important. Uh, obvious thing is like you're not so conceptually clear uh, or judgmental about politics or ideology. You're more like um, un going into the unconscious to to try to to fathom um, these things. So as a uh, for for a female artist, well, it's it's just the way it is. I don't really think I don't dwell on it. Uh, maybe you're just saying that uh, women um, are. Malleable, easily change. I went to this um, Walling's um, P and Pili's um, gallery. Uh, uh, so I saw the exhibition of you, and you wrote, uh, you draw a particular thing a day, and then it was a series of works, uh, 300 pieces of drawings, and including some uh, color balloons. And uh, I, um, it was very clear to me that this was a work by a female artist. But today, for me, I can no longer have such a clear judgment on it in terms of the gender identity. I don't know if it's done by a female artist or or not. So for you, will you still uh, use such a judgment? I'm trying to express um, something as, as a female artist. Well, well, for gender differences, I really, you know, haven't thought a lot about that. Well, I, it, you know, I have not really thought about myself as a, as a male person, you know, and how would I work under that situation, or would I be, you know, you know the, you know, I, I was, you know, just trying to look at things from different perspectives. Well, furthermore, with uh, age and with changes in your, you know, mechanism, you know, your body strength, you know, I am willing to uh, look at these type of things using different perspectives and, you know, use my own imagination to create. 
you know, as it relates to, you know, what is, you know, what should a female identity be, you know, I really have not put in a lot of thought about that. Now, let me talk to uh, Johannes uh, Hedinger. Well, perhaps we can first see some of the work of um, Johannes. Uh, can we start with um, those work, please? This, uh, Johannes has uh, brought with him, you know, two uh, books. Uh, of what's next. Okay, let's so, stop here. Johannes, I have to ask and you some question about, you know, what the next. So, really, for you, I mean, this is a great a compilation of, you know, artistic thought on our time. So, can you give a, a little, bit, little bit of introduction of what, what this means? Because I know, yeah, please tell the people. Okay, thank you for having me here. Um, hello. Um, well, it was land, the title was land actually from that um, series of textbook, so far two came out. And, uh, the f well, it started actually that a lot of people asked me what's next. So students ask, the press of course ask, even the gallerist or the curator as well, well what's next? So, so we, gave him some uh, we gave them some answers. <laughs> it's a thick book and it's actually a collection of um, texts about um, what might be or could be the, the next big thing in, in contemporary art. And it's actually a collection of texts by kind of well-known scholars and um, thinkers such as Zizek, Groys, Bourriot, Sloterdijk. But there are also artists involved like Andrea Fraser, The Yes Man or Tino Segal. And there are not only essays, there are manifestos, there are, uh, we just see something from uh, Abramovich. So most of them are quite, um, that's an older piece, it's four years old, but uh, most of them, they are two, three years old. It's a collection, some of them are written new and some were collected. And there are even uh, some out the art uh, from, from, from people outside the art field, uh, field involved even a priest or people from the business uh, sector uh, contributed their very own perspective on what could be the next thing in terms of art production, art perception, or art education, or even uh, art distribution. So it was um, a selection, kind of a broad overview in this so-called framework, the next society. And uh, with the next uh, volume, we uh, kind of uh, zoomed in to a certain, um, like, let, let's say, subject. This one, the, the focus is on art education. And the next uh, book will uh, deal with what, what's the next artist, or the next the new artist, or the, what was the artist, actually. We can talk maybe later about that, too. Uh, well, and the beautiful thing is all those books are combined um, in one website called also What's Next, because when you open the book, there's no pictures at all, just textbook, but there, there is a QR code here. And then from there, you can switch over to the website and you get some images or videos or more text material, biographies, etc. And it's a grown archive, it's still going on. And the other beautiful thing is, um, let's say after two years, we, edited, uh, we, we publish the book, we give out the most text for free, so um, when, when we get clearance. So that means in about one month, you can find all these texts for free on that website, so please check it out. Yeah, apart from buying the book, yeah, it sounds like we're selling the book here. And apart from buying the book, please tell me the concept, I mean, what really, what do you concern? Why are you putting all this kind of manifest, manifesto stuff, why are you putting you know, like what you mentioned about uh, Slav Zizek's um, comments, I mean, writings and Boris Gorys' stuff and Mar uh, Marina Abramovich's statement and whatever. I mean, why put them all here? Oh, on one hand, it's a, it's a working tool. We work uh, with it with the students. So it's reading material and um, it's multi-voice. So sometimes um, um, it has no angle, it's not only left wing view or so, so it's, uh, it contradicts. And um, actually you were also involved in this book and once you saw that, you jumped at it and said we have to bring it out in Chinese. So maybe you can 
let us know what the status of the Chinese version is. No, before that, I think I want to jump a little bit because I think we can bring that into the end with a group discussion and you can challenge me, whatever. But I think now I want to jump from the book into your artistic practice because I think that's super important as what behind it and why you're doing the book because for me, it's very much related to your artistic practice because you're a highly conceptual artist tool. So I think, yeah, so let's start uh, more video. More images and video about their project, Blauch. Yeah, Johannes, so you have to tell us what that means really with the dead tree, you know? <laughs> and yeah, you wouldn't believe, but we started in 1997 as a conceptual media artist duo, and now we're going to the countryside and to folk art, kind of. Um, well, uh, what you saw it was the beginning of a so-called, let's say, participatory or socially engaged art project, which is still running. We started three years ago. And we will go on for the next four years with that. And actually, it's called Bloch. And Bloch, you call a Bloch the, the lowest five meter of a tree without branches. So the, the best wood is called Bloch. But you call also a very old custom in the eastern part of Switzerland Bloch. And it goes like that, that the last tree in the winter felt is pulled by 20 men, as you saw, from one town to another one, and then back. and will be auctioned off in the village square to the highest bidder. And three years ago, we went there and we bought this tree. 
So usually local spy, then they do shingles out of it on furniture, and then that's it, and then wait for the next year. But then we said, okay, we don't want to make a chair or furniture, we want to, um, and we don't want to, to move it only between two villages. Our goal is we travel around the world with uh, stations or stops on every continent. So since three years or four years, we're traveling around the globe with that tree. So it's two tons and uh, it's quite an adventure. And the idea is that on every station we go, we kind of collaborate and participate with local artists based on their local uh, culture, traditions and their background and producing new global art production or productions. So it's an invitation, it's kind of a, an opportunity, it's a nucleus to make things happen. For me, as I understand, the tree will certainly live longer than our life. You know, they will continue. Um, I hope so. <laughs> and yeah, so please tell me or tell us what uh, the next for you. I mean, apart from this project, well, you can tell us about the project, what the next for this tree and what the next for you. Um, in terms of artistic production, so we started, let's, let's put it this way, we were, we were artists who make things, and now we shift over to artists who make things happen. That means we kind of open um, the work in terms of um, uh, shared collaboration, shared authorship. Actually, we don't know what's the next step. It's kind of brutal to... you. Sometimes you have to suffer. We don't. Well, well, the goal is that when we visit all continents, we come back to Switzerland for a final festival. But that's everything we know. We don't know uh, what happens, where is the next station, and what kind of people we ended up, and if they will burn it, if they will carve it, if... We don't know. And this is, this is kind of an adventure, and it's... It, it's it's kind of interesting. So, so far we, we have been to the Asia part, we were to Shanghai Biennale, we went to the States, uh, currently it's in the States and Europe. And uh, my, my big dream is still we go to the Antarctica, but uh, we have to finance that first. Okay, very good. This is Shanghai, as I remembered. That was the last Shanghai Biennial. This is describe a little bit more of the project, where it travels, and how you deal with it. Yeah. Okay. And um, now I want to ask um, Lu Yang, because here maybe we should see the work in the in the so-called a chronology order where she developed a so-called a work dealing with this so-called uh, Wooters man. <laughs> which is we're showing this afternoon also, and we go, we're going to show it again uh, tomorrow at uh, Agnes B. So if you guys join us, so there will be more focus of this topic of Lu Yang and Sun Quan there, and of course we're going to rescreen their work. Yeah, so.
呃，我在这儿想问一下陆阳，因为嗯。呃 I'd like to ask Lu Yang because I really did not understand this work. However, you know, I have to explain to you first of all the personnel appearing in the film. Where does it come from? And also in the cosplay, uh, we uh, it was you actually invited her to come and uh, uh, and perform that role, right? Yes. Uh, what you saw just now was an opening of this work. It's a rather short one. The entire film is around 13 minutes, and uh, I would call it a uterus max. And I have designed it to have a lot of uh, different functions. And also, uh, she would have a lot of intelligence to attack. And in this work, there's a lot of uh, content. There's a cosplay section to it. And there's also a gaming section to it in the cosplay section. Because uh, I, I have designed this, uh, this uterus um, uh, to be a, a neutral uh, gender, neither a male nor a female. So I've invited the first um, neutral sex person from uh, Japan to play this uh, uterus max. On this picture, um, you will see the uh, nude of this um, neutral sex. On the right, this is herself, right? Yes. This is um, taken in uh, Japan, in Tokyo. No, this, this is the latest game developed by Lu Yang, out of this. This is now a game. For this game, uh, it's a rather simple one. It also connects uh, with uh, a fighting game. With every step, you know, it involves all the different uh, fights with the uh, uterus max. Uh, uh, you have to collect the red blood cells, and she can use um, blood to um, attack and also to drive her own movements. And this would uh, involve the, your latest work of uh, the uh, baby. Yes, I was trying to make a joke. And, you know, uh, actually it's not really related. I just put it in here for fun. Uh, well, I think within a two years' time, uh, you have developed this work. Uh, from the visual to cosplay and also to game that we see today. You know, why is it that you wanted to do this? Uh, why are you making such uh, so many possibilities for the same work? Well, I think for each work, what it's trying to express uh, can be very different. Uh, you know, with uh, production and photography, you know, every type, uh, every version might come with a different style. And it also may be uh, a promotion. Uh, some may, you know, I would use, you know, this material to try to package my own work. What do you mean by package? For example, in this age, you can use not only art, uh, I mean painting, but also other media, for example, games to represent yourself, to express yourself. This is our reality. So the second part of the game, there's a, a male kaiju, a monster. So if you collect the XY uh, chromosomes and you attack to it, and then it be will turn into a female kaiju, and then you attack again, and the monster just dies away. So after this particular work, uh, does it continue into something else you've been working on? I think actually each piece of work is interrelated to one another. Uh, well, whether this resources sustain the development, continuous development of this um, of these works. So uh, the state of my work is like I will work on something and then I just put it aside and then I come back again in a couple of years to work on it. I don't want it to 
any of my work to be the end product of something. I want them to be able to be developed um, in a multifaceted ways. So let, let us just watch a little bit more of this particular work and then I would like to um, invite the uh, floor to ask questions to um, the three artists featured in today's talk. Um, please raise your hand. Anybody with any questions, please just raise your hand. No question at all. I'm thinking that um, we have m we made certain choices that all three of them. Um, what are the similarities um, be between these three uh, in their artistic practice? We actually um, intentionally put two female artists in the middle, and the two men are sidelined. We are flanking them, so we actually have uh, we intentionally done so because when we are doing this last chapter of the screen screening, it is also implying or anticipating that one. So I would like to have a discussion about what is going on the next and. I would like to drop the question mark. Um, the reason is that I would like to discuss this from the perspective of artistic creation. Uh, just as Sung Kun has mentioned, um, if you basically um, keep up with your times and move forward along with it, and I think people are quite clear um, how they're going to proceed. So if you have no question at all, I would like to return to the three of us and discuss between ourselves about traveling. I would say um, in many, on many occasions we are always traveling, we are always on a trip. We cannot be like Song Kun. Um, uh, when you just, I was ruminating on what you were talking about, your concern uh, about China, is it because you live there or you travel a lot or you stay away from it quite often so you can see much more clearly and you can see the uh, epochal changes um, and appreciate, appreciate them much better? I think this has to do with, uh, well, I'm quite different from um, other people's approaches, I guess mine is quite different because uh, ever since I was a child I was I was born and I was raised in China and I still spend ma the majority of my time here. I think traveling is part of my life but it doesn't take um, an overwhelming major uh, like a, a large part of my life but it does but my formative years I spend in China so my approach is that um, I situate myself in it. Uh, occasionally, I'm a spectator, but I'm basically experiencing it firsthand, and it actually leaves an imprint on you. You're not just a mere ex uh, spectator. So, prior to that, my life was experienced as such. I don't know after afterwards, but well, that was the last three decades. So, China basically runs through you. That's how I f see it. Uh, Lu Yang, um, when well, we were discussing. Uh, whether we were going to do it in English or Chinese. And I think you are recently staying, most recently you're staying in the United States. I know, no, in the last couple of years I did a few residences. Uh, you can see this uh, uterus was done when I was in Japan. I think that uh, traveling for me is not is not that you have to go somewhere uh, to a particular place. I think it has to do, it is kind of in sync with what you're doing in your own life. I really never actually try to define it. I'm just like going with the flow and go along with the development. kind of traveling you or not, no? Um, well, yeah, I would divide it in two sections. One thing that the work you saw, it has to travel. So it makes sense that we travel a lot. The other thing is the art circus that you have to travel. So we are here in, in Hong Kong, then next week I'm in New York and back in Switzerland. So it's kind of insane too. So our ecological footprint probably is gigantic and everybody of ours, of you, are probably gold member of any airline. So. That I'm critical again uh, about it, but uh, since or when it's part of the project, traveling is a really good thing. Then you 
explore um, in new things. So it's it's I think it's it's more than about global art production, and then it makes sense traveling. 好,那我想就是说,旅行是我们的。So, traveling is, also, um, Johannes mentioned it is actually important for him. It is one of the features of our life, uh, how we encounter each other here or in New York, uh, or in our next stop, perhaps in Venice, in Venice or um, if you participate in, in the artist activities or artistic production, uh, you have, a, do, uh, is your creative activity actually get up towards such, um, you know, traveling, get up towards such act, traveling, uh, creative activity. Well, this depends. Sometimes you actually take part in local activities, you're uh, exhibited there, so it's part of the job you do, so you have to go there. And there's also a kind of traveling you, if you're taking up a residency somewhere and start to work with locals, it is extremely crucial. Uh, why it's the why it is the case? Why do you have to work with the locals? Because a lot of artists they seem to work in their own studio. They would like to work in sort of relative isolation within their own system because it's more under control. Um, so you collaborate with the locals. You collaborate with so the you know uh, you work with the museums and then you commission uh, particular um, computer game companies. Well, I think it's just coincidental. It's just by pure chance that. Many when I was a student, when I was back in China, I couldn't find anybody within my country uh, and to to help me with my work, and nobody would want to help a student to achieve something. So um, I have to do it like a diagram and have to apply for these residencies, and they accepted me. And then so naturally, um, they helped you uh, with your work, and in this process, you could feel that. Um, it's a different kinds of work you're doing. Uh, Song Kun, uh, you mentioned that um, you know being in a particular lo locale, um, the global movement brought about by artistic systems and also your localized production. Does, does this kind of come into play as well? Um, I try to see it as a last chain, last point in the chain of uh, artistic system. It can probably fall onto a particularly different, well, can fall on different particular points. It could be an exhibition, expo, um, all sorts of art projects, and perhaps it would also go onto the street or and some really um, low, shady uh, places. Um, I will also uh, respond to different audiences, for example, uh, different places. I would try to select a different portfolio to, 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 to exhibit. And I also I put more emphasis on what is the original um, motivation, your original intent um, of the artist. And then naturally you will just fall on that particular point where you should be. So I never really thought, give it, given it too much thought. I just wanted to see the original point. Uh, uh, I guess, sorry, the time is kind of up. We have to, 10 more minutes. Okay. So Johannes, what do you think? I mean, with your production and the, 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 like what you mentioned about this kind of, so-called uh, traveling system of this global production of art. So what make more sense for you? It makes sense if, if it's part of the, of the content, and it, it, it makes very much sense. But uh, well, the other thing is, is the art market, and then we can question mark that as well. And uh, well, it's a global market. So but what I would, since we are three, four artists on stage, I, I, and, and, the, and the question, or not the question, uh, is what's next. I, I'm really interested in to, to hear your thoughts about um, what's the next artist, or you in 10 years. Are you still an artist, or are you calling yourself an artist in 10 years? Will there be artists in 100 years? It's for them and for you. <laughs> I feel that 
Um, my conviction is that in a decade's time, I'm going to be an author. Um, Worker, I'm going to work on something that, um, something that I like. The title of the artist doesn't really matter that much to me. I mean, it's not really. It doesn't have much. Doesn't hold much meaning for me. What about Song Quan? I really never thought myself as an artist or not. I mean, the society labels you as an artist, and perhaps you had this vocation from early childhood. Um, there's no other way of living your life. So if you live your life in such such a way, so and so a way, and the art, the society defines you as an artist, so I cannot change that. And maybe it will be like that. It's rather open, because as I understand, I think to be an artist um, is something, but it's not really like what the Johnson Boys said. Everybody is an artist. It's really something that. Um, you really pay attention, you really put time in it, you put effort in it, um, and you try to do something different. And and you bring that into a certain kind of um, platform, or you bring that into a certain kind of uh, uh, so-called area, then I would say, okay, in the context, this kind of effort, this kind of time involvement can be treated as art. Then I think, yeah, in the future, I don't know, maybe you, it's more interesting that you step into the film uh, area. It's maybe it's more interesting to step in, uh, into, uh, I mean, other kind of creative part of uh, our world. Um, I think it's rather something rather open because I even don't know whether tomorrow we can we can do art or not. Because like uh, uh, yesterday, I received this message from one of our speaker. He cannot come. Uh, and today, this morning, I received a message from Lu Yang. Her, pl her plan is kind of delayed for five hours. I, I really don't know. You know, with these kind of things, I, uh, I have no idea whether how things can be done in the future. Because certainly, if you treat the world like, like a solid piece that nothing changes, then, of course, the new thing changes. Uh, the new change will come. But if you treat the world, whole world like a, a very dynamic kind of changing um, body, then I don't know. So everything should just change and, and follow this kind of change and to, to generate it to be happened. So I think, yeah, I really don't know what, what that means really in 10 years and I, I don't know what what's going to be happened, but I know uh, tomorrow I will professionally still working on something, but yeah. But the system we are sitting in, like the art market, for example, the whole or the art system in, in total, it needs producers. If we stop, the whole system crashes, probably. So, so they need us as artists, and, and we kind of label this. I guess us, us is not only us. <laughs> us is like uh, the whole kind of crowd inside there. <laughs> inside, yeah. But if the there is no art and people who produce art, it's empty there. Yes, but there will be always people producing something. But of, of course, course, I mean, a lot of people are producing something. It's hard to be, um, how you call it, recognized or categorized or presented there. So I would say, maybe I wish for someday, you know, that people can present something completely empty. Be because you know? that's what, what, what I get the feeling also. She said, maybe I'm an author in 10 years. And you said you know, sometimes you're not com so comfortable with the notion of artist or an, uh, you're mo more a musician. So I'm not sure if, if we have to be called artist. Of course, we produce kind of cultural products or you can call it art. But I think it moves slowly away from the object to the subject. And if you ask me what's next, then I think that this is next. It goes away from the artifact to the more to the process, to referential, to the um, maybe research also, maybe action, maybe situation. Also in my work, I, I see that. And, and you do games and you want to go to, to being an author and you are a musician. So it's the action, it's the life action, it's the situation. So when I try to analyze what happened now on stage, then this, this is my summary from today. Very nice, thank you. <laughs> and what your summary would be, uh, Sun Kun? Yeah. Uh, 
物件化的开始转向非物件化的，或者物质化的转向非物质化的。Uh, I think my concern is more with the most essential, more basic um, things about humanity. For example, when art first emerged up until today, I think a lot of things haven't actually really shifted. Uh, I'm really concerned with what is not shifting. Um, what has been changing is not really under our control. And you can only, I mean, art can be very pure. Uh, whichever era you find yourself in, the artist, him or herself, can do such uh, so and so. And you cannot really concern yourself with too many uh, obligations, for example. For example, you talk about change. I want to distill it to the original purpose, the original intention. Um, I mean, our particular era, the thing you mentioned, we're also going through it, I'm also going through it. You probably will feel that art has going through a process, uh, maybe the power of uh, market. Sometimes I feel that art is just a, a very weak link in the human ideology. But human history has been very long, and it is going to still be very long. We're just a very uh, ma minor part of it, and I try not to think too big. I mean, your life, within your life, what what art is to you in your life? So when uh, when a member of the audience wants to raise a question. Johannes, uh, just in terms of art education and what is next, do you think digitization means that like universities are now global or art education is now global and it's all by distance? Well, a good example is so I opened yesterday an exhibition in the art space called Connecting Space, which is run by Zurich Academy of the Arts. And we have a uh, NYU campus in Abu Dhabi. So it's also the educational system is globalized, of course. And of course, they bring over their teacher and their ideas and their products. And that, that's happened. As it happens in the art market, it happens also in the education market. If it's good or bad, that's another discussion for another panel, but it is. OK, I think we have to stop here. And thank you, Jessica. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, if you have more time, you can talk to the artists when we get off the stage. And thank you very much. 谢谢大家。